Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Easter. Just a couple announcements for you today. Welcome to Deb Delane, who is here filling in for Alan while he's on vacation. Thank you so much, Deb. And a thank you to our new Sing and Rejoice Choir participants who will be singing again today and through the Easter season. Everyone, all the young people, even the little ones, are invited to come up and sing during that time. It's as we are setting the table for communion, so feel free to join the ones that are already up here. Just a um, little reminder that tonight's Bible Art Journaling with Colleen Nielsen, and there's a sign-up sheet in the narthex for that. And also that the family event, our monthly family events next Sunday, it's a hike at Wildwood Park, and you can see details in your bulletin or talk to Pete Fox, our youth and family director. So at this time, I ask you to please rise for Thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation, our men. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Acts, the third chapter. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety, we have made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as I did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. We will now sing responsibly Psalm 4.
The second reading is from 1 John, the third chapter. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that Messiah is to suffer and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O God, our Lord, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. So maybe like me, sometimes you wonder why it was so difficult for those disciples to understand all the things that Jesus told them or to believe all the things that were happening. Why did they find it so difficult to comprehend and to believe? Probably because they were human, just like you and me, right? Each of the gospel accounts of the resurrection of Jesus in the days that followed is different. On Easter Sunday, we heard Mark's version which ends kind of abruptly with the women discovering the empty tomb and running away, it says, in terror and amazement. And then last week we heard the part of the story from John's Gospel when the disciples are hiding behind closed doors on Easter evening 
when Jesus appears to the disciples, Thomas is absent. And Thomas wants to see for himself, so Jesus gives Thomas what he needs to believe. And Jesus goes even further giving a blessing to us, the ones who believe without seeing. And we haven't heard Matthew's version in this year's electionary cycle, but in his story, Jesus appears to the women as they are fearfully leaving the empty tomb. Jesus instructs the women to go tell the disciples to go to Galilee where they will see him. And then Matthew's gospel ends in just a few 10 verses later as the disciples do see Jesus in Galilee where Jesus commissions them to go and, and make disciples of all nations. They're all familiar stories, but all a bit different. Today, we have Luke's version. We find the disciples on the evening of Easter again, but we only heard part of the story, and I just wanna catch you up a little bit from chapter 24 of Luke. On Easter morning, a group of women go to the, temp the tomb, just as it is in the other gospels, to pay their respects and to complete that burial ritual that was the custom of their day, but the body is missing. Luke then describes two men in dazzling clothing telling the women that Jesus had risen, reminding them that Jesus had taught them about this and told them that he would be crucified and rise three days later. The women go to the disciples to share what these two men in dazzling clothing have told him, but the disciples think their words are unbelievable, an idle tale in the words of Luke. Two of the disciples were so discouraged then that they left Jerusalem and headed for the town of Emmaus. Maybe you remember the familiar story of the walk to Emmaus. As they're walking, can you just imagine their conversation? How filled with questions and doubts and fear they must have been? How could they have let this happen to their beloved teacher? What could what could have happened to his body? Who could have taken him? Where is he? Where is he now? What do we do? And as they're walking, they encounter a stranger who started to walk with them. And he asks what they're talking about. And they're pretty astonished that they couldn't, didn't know, this person didn't know about the events surrounding Jesus. So they tell him their tale. And as the man begins to talk, to interpret scripture for them and with them. And as they meet Emmaus, they ask him to join him them for dinner. They share bread with him, and as they ate together, they suddenly realize that it is Jesus in their presence. And they have been with him all this time, and they finally now recognize him in the breaking of bread. And when he, they do recognize him, Jesus disappears. The two disciples leave Emmaus and go right away and rush back to the other disciples in Jerusalem and tell them what they had encountered, that they had indeed encountered the risen Christ. And that brings us to our verses today. Because then immediately when the two disciples are sharing the story, as our scripture tells us, Jesus appears to all of them, showing them his hands and his side to prove to them that he is alive and then he also eats with them something to prove them that he is not a ghost, that he is real. Jesus accommodates them just like he did Thomas in the John's gospel. Jesus does not scold them or chastise them or shame them or tell them they should have expected him. Jesus, he doesn't ask them why they're still struggling to believe what he told them. He does not chastise them for not believing the words the women told him, them when they came back from the tomb. Instead, Jesus shows them his hands and his side and eats some fish to prove he is a living human being, living flesh and blood. Each of the accounts of the four gospels of the resurrection of Jesus and his appearance to those disciples is a bit different, but they all have a common theme, that God understands their unbelief and our unbelief. Each story shows us that God knows that doubts and desire of proof are part of being human. Human in a world of uncertainty. 
My son went through a time when he was struggling with wanting proof when he was in college. He studied chemical engineering and he was steeped in science. And one weekend when he was home, he said to me that he was having some doubts about the existence of God. Now, I was only ordained the first year he was in college, so I was a pretty new pastor and I wasn't really prepared to have this debate with my own son. So we struggled with the problem together a bit. We both did some reading and talked about what we had discovered. And in the end, of course, we found nothing to give him the concrete scientific proof he was looking for. But finally, he was able to come to terms with the idea that even if you believe in the Big Bang Theory, as he did, the Big Bang Theory of creation, of the universe somehow, somewhere in that power behind the beginning came from something or someone he was oh, and he was finally okay with believing that he could believe in science and he could also believe in a powerful God, creator of the ultimate life. For me, just taking a few moments to look in a clear night sky helps me realize that God must exist to have created the vast wonders found in the mystery of creation. And this was pretty much highlighted for me this past week, solar eclipse. I know some of you were went travel to see it in, in the full eclipse on Monday. But I watched it on TV and on the television coverage, they went from city to city. And again and again, there were people who were just overwhelmed with the magnificent experience that they had seen as they gazed in the sky. With the tools of modern astronomy today, our scientists can see a universe undreamed of even a century ago. While the full extent of the universe remains unknown, astronomers have peered out multiple billions of light years Within this known universe, I have read that there are as many as 10 sextillion stars. That's a one followed by 22 zeros. It's a lot of stars. The universe is far more amazing than the ancients could have ever imagined. So even if you accept the Big Bang Theory as the beginning of the universe, it does not explain how the universe was actually formed to be a spark coming from somewhere. It requires us to accept certain premises outside the realm of the known laws of physics. Of course, someone could say that does not give us concrete proof of a God in existence, but it certainly does help us see the wonder and mystery of creation. For many Christians, the vastness of our world is enough to help their belief to give us faith as we believe that our impressive universe must have had a creator, a magnanimous creator with unimaginable power. But even in the midst of our belief, sometimes it's hard to find God present in our world, in, in our time. Doubt is still part of believing. I think most of us would agree that Pope Francis is someone who we would describe as having a deep and devout faith. And he is quoted as saying, who among us has not experienced insecurity, loss, and even doubts on their faith journey? We've all experienced this, me too. During these weeks of our Easter season, we're given stories that remind us that God is willing to meet us where we are on our individual faith journey to embrace our wonder, our joy, even our disbelief, and gather us up into this marvelous, surprising, unexpected grace of love, of love given to us freely by this magnanimous creator with saving life and death and resurrection of Jesus. We all have questions and doubts, just like those disciples. But what might our lives look like if we could truly embrace the love of God given to us always, 
it's difficult, but if it is true that God raised Jesus from the dead, or if it is true that all creation will be renewed and we will be given new life, if it's true that nothing, nothing will we have done or that has been done to us can separate us from the love and grace of our God, if it's true that God will not abandon us but always reach out to us continually with grace, mercy, and forgiveness and giving us what we need to believe, trying to help us believe, if any of this is true, let alone all of this, then how might our lives look differently in the here and now? How might we trust with our hearts open and our minds and eyes to notice and see God's love in our world and share that love with others? How might this kind of faith, not knowledge, not proof, but trusting, courageous faith, change how we look at our relationships, our world, our resources, our politics, our families, our church, and our future. Amen.
Together we profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. God of grace, hear our prayer. Creating God like a master artist you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration and teach us how to be good stewards so all life may thrive. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Empower all leaders to work for peace and justice for those they govern. Send strength and comfort to those who suffer due to injustice, conflict, or war. Today we pray especially for the area in and around the Middle East. God of grace, hear our prayer. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Send compassionate caregivers to those who are sick and suffering. Surround them with your healing presence. We pray especially for Roberta Anderson, Bob Bentleon, Jim Bomberger, Carol Bowman, Dennis Buchanan, Kinley Connolly, Karen Savage Critchfield, Donna Dixon, Theo Epitropolis, Susie Epler, Janice Guiling, Drew Herdson, Bonnie Hess, Glenn Hoffa, Ben Hausman, Herb Hebner, Mary Hebner, Jennifer Johnson, Nancy Miller, Chip Murray, Sharon Murray, Donna Pastuck, Tom Rieger, Bob Seibert, Michelle Spader, Pete Stone, Bob Trump, Bob Wharton, Mike Welty, Don Yerger, and all those we either name aloud or in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of all times and ages, we give thanks for the lives of our loved ones who have died and now live in your kingdom. Assure us of the peace you have promised, that we may join them in everlasting life. Provide hope and peace to all who mourn. Today, we pray especially for the family of Harry Heath. God of grace, hear our prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another.
Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true paschal lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life and so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour upon, out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of bread. Come and eat at God's table. Thanks be to God.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, go in peace, rejoice, and be glad.